you know, one day I just had this wild idea that I, you know, wanted to do it. You know, I, I work in a heavy equipment uh, construction company, and so I see this equipment all the time, and I thought, you know, that'd be really cool. I have my skits are here, you know, that'd be pretty sweet if I could have like a, a greater attachment for it. So the idea came from, you know, just, you know, I want one and then the design uh, was basically just, I looked up a picture online and just tried to follow it as close as I possibly could. It didn't have any measurements, no dimensions, just, you know, looking at the picture and be like, okay, that's how they did that, oh, I'm gonna do it this way. The basic ones, that look, they run about eight to 10 grand. The really nice ones are anywhere from 17 to 25,000. I bought uh, materials from uh, Trent Steel and AB Welding and also Valley Iron. Right now I got about $3,500 into it, um, excluding my man hours. I probably have another probably two, fifty, three hundred hours in my time I've counted for it. Uh, past welding experience, uh, basically just growing up doing it. Um, you know, my dad's an independent contractor, so, you know, he does a lot of the odds and ends of, you know, welding sometimes, and so I learned a little bit from him. Uh, my friends over at Trent Steel, um, they taught me a lot about welding and, you know, the procedures. Uh, and then I came here to Fresno State and, you know, uh, took the MEC Act 50 class. Regala taught me a, a whole lot more, you know, on procedures and, you know, how you would go about welding and, you know, using different types of methods to weld different types of materials. He would just basically come in, you know, give you a pointer and say, hey, you know, this is how I would do it. So, you know, and that's how you learn is you got to fail to succeed, you know. So and that's that, that's basically what he bases it off of. He's a really great teacher, patient, you know, provides all the information in the world for you. He doesn't get real excited about things, you know. He, he doesn't show it. He does, but, uh, you know, he... He, he likes, you know, when kids, you know, challenge themselves, and I, I think, you know, that's where he gets the bigger enjoyment. Yeah, you could talk a big game and say you're going to do this, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he, he wants to see what you actually can do, and, you know, that's where I think he gets his enjoyment. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Obviously, it doesn't have all the functions and all the perfect boards. In a sense, this is going to make my life a whole lot easier. You know, we have five-hour block, um, you know, allotted for this class, so... You know, managing my time, you know, I knew I wasn't going to get done with, uh, you know, the 15 or 16 weeks we have with only five hours each, each week. You know, I had to come in and put in extra time when Ken was here and nobody else was, working by myself quite a bit. My friend Corey helped me out a lot when he could. You know, I pulled it back and forth between my house and here, working on it weekends, late nights, things like that. So, manage my time, you know, I've put, you know, basically all my spare time into making sure that this works for the end of the semester. So. Uh, Ken's obviously provided quite a bit of advice for me. Um, my friends over at Trent Steel, they helped out uh, an abundant amount. Um, you know, they say, you know, that's not going to work or this isn't going to work, you need to do this. And so, you know, it was just, you need thicker wall, you need to do this, you need to do that. And, you know, Ken told me the same thing. If you think of something, overbuild it. You know, and that, the whole thing just, you know, came out a lot better than I thought it would have. To see it work here in 18 weeks is it's pretty cool. I like it. The, the most challenging parts are, you know, the things that you really don't see, um, you know, pen assemblies, you know, there's a lot to line up to get exactly right because if you're off up here, then, you know, you multiply that over a distance and it adds up to a greater amount. Figuring out the math on the pen assemblies, you know, where hydraulic pistons need to be in correlation to what the mold board height is and, you know, changing this and changing that gives you this. Uh, it's really helped the critical thinking process. How to wire in hydraulics, having only a couple switches in the cab, you know, how do I operate, you know, three pistons off of two switches, and, you know, just figuring out how to make it work with what I have. And so it really helped the critical thinking process. The, the mold board here uh, is basically, I bought a two foot diameter pipe, three eight wall, and cut about 14 inches out of it to get the curvature of the blade right here. You know, that, that, you know, I had to think about that for quite a while on how I wanted to do that. But you know, the whole thing, the whole thing was a challenge from day one. Doing things in the right order, you know, that was, that was the biggest challenge. You know, I'd get ahead of myself and be like, well, I should have done this first, you know, instead of doing this part first. Um, another thing is, you know, just the whole assembly back here to get this, you know, the hydraulics and everything in conjunction to work the way I designed it to, that's, that's quite a challenge. I anticipated it not working that well. It worked uh, better than I anticipated. Um, so I'm back to the drawing board with it, you know, tweaking a couple things, just redesign a few things that I would do differently now that I know how it reacts when we actually put it to work.
basically all this is gonna do is it's gonna do fine grading. It's not gonna go out and move a whole mountain in one pass. Uh, you know, my my ambitions for it are you know just basically finishing off the pad. You know, pad level on the back here. You know, I don't have it installed yet, but there's gonna be a tower that comes up, and I have a dual slope laser that it'll sit there, and I'll put a receiver up there, and I can set my laser anywhere on the site, and basically you know I can set that receiver to the grade I want and I can sit here in the cab. I don't have automatics, but I can sit here and watch the receiver and that receiver will tell me up or down. And so I can chase arrows by, you know, and finish off the pad. And that's, you know, that's my biggest goal with this thing is just, you know, making a flat area. It's not gonna do slopes or any of that stuff. Raised construction, so, um, you know, I could go into the agricultural field, you know, Fresno's really big on that. Uh, but, you know, construction, you know, I know what kind of money you can make in that field. So I'm leaning towards, you know, construction just because I know more about that field than I do the agricultural field. And I know more people in that profession.